One of the more nebulous characters at Night in the Woods is May's Aunt Molly, whom she hilariously refers to as Aunt Mall Cop. Molly only appears in the game a handful of times, but in each of these appearances, she makes a number of vague and suspicious statements. This, combined with her relative authority in Possum Springs, has led many to speculate that she is a member of the Cult of the Black Goat. The narrative structure of Night in the Woods borrows a lot from games like Dark Souls, where many things are intentionally left open to interpretation. So it's safe to say that we'll never get a definitive answer on Molly's connection to the cult. But what we can do is examine the clues we have and try to come up with the most likely answer. So let's dig in. First off, let's get one thing out of the way. Unless the cult has some serious survival prowess or magic more powerful than what Eid already has at his disposal, there's no way that Molly is a member because she appears at the end of the game. After the murderous aunts and uncles have been buried in the mines with their MAGA hats and their QAnon blankets. This wasn't always the case. In the original version of the game, she was conspicuously absent. But as of the Weird Autumn edition, she could be found down the street from May's house. Based on what she says here in the epilogue, and throughout the rest of the game, I've come to believe that Molly has no connection to the cult, nor is she aware of its existence at all but that she does believe something sinister is going on in Possum Springs and hasn't been able to prove it yet. As for the reason she's unable to solve this mystery, well, as you'll see, her nickname is pretty well deserved. The first evidence to support this comes on day two, when May and the gang discover the severed arm outside the diner. Molly shows up right away, says that something bad is going on, and insists that May ride home with B. On day three, Right before May goes to the party, Molly stops outside her house to check in on her. She once again says that bad things happen around the town all the time, and then gives her an ominous warning. She tells her to be careful, because she'd hate to see any of these bad things happen to her. When you combine these two incidents, it's pretty clear to me that Molly knows there's something darker going on in Possum Springs than folks are aware of. The cult insists that they take people who no one will miss, but they sure did screw that up when they took Casey, because there's a fair few people looking for him, including May, Greg, and whoever put up the missing persons posters on the bulletin board. Molly, as a small town cop, is probably aware of every missing persons report that comes in. Given that the cult has been taking people for years, if even a few of them had reports filed about them, Molly would have to be pretty oblivious not to start connecting the dots. Like, more than mall cop oblivious. Our next run-in with Molly comes after Harfest, when May sees Ede kidnap someone and chases him to the edge of the fence. Molly insists that May go home, and throws cold water on the idea that she saw a ghost. But reading between the lines here, the urgency with which she insists May go home, a refrain she's repeated twice already, and now more seriously than ever, it sure seems like she knows that something probably did happen, and wants to get May out of there as soon as possible. But that still doesn't mean that she believes May saw something supernatural. The following day, May finds Aunt Molly back at the fence. First, she asks her to repeat her story from the night before. Once May's done so, Molly is largely dismissive of it. She brings up that no missing persons report was filed, and then shuts her down entirely when May proposes her ghost theory. Before she leaves, Molly reveals that her and another cop spent the morning searching the woods because of what May saw but they didn't find anything. This is a key conversation as we examine both Molly herself and whether or not she's aware of the cult. Her presence here and the fact that she searched the woods this morning indicates that she believes May to some extent. She's a local yokel cop the day after one of the biggest events of the year. She wouldn't have done all of this if she didn't think there was some validity to her story. Still, she's really dismissive of May in this conversation. So what's really going on? Above all else, what really stands out to me about this exchange is how burnout Molly seems. It could be that she's just tired from all the post-Harfest drama, sick of chasing after teenagers out past their curfew and people doing crimes. But when you combine this with the fact that she did follow up on May's report, it suggests that Molly is perhaps disappointed that she didn't find anything in the woods. Perhaps her frustration isn't that May saw something, but rather 
that what May saw wasn't something she could really follow up on. How does one track down a ghost that can go through solid objects? How do you find a missing person when you don't even have a name, or a description to go off of, or family or friends to contact? It's essentially a dead end. If Molly does suspect that something sinister is going on in Possum Springs, then she might have seen May's report as an opportunity to finally break the case open. To find nothing, and to have May insist that it was a ghost, something that Molly certainly doesn't believe in, is probably pretty demoralizing. Which would explain why she's so burnt out here. I'd always read her last line here with an insistent tone, as in, that is it. Now, I see it as an expression of her disappointment, more of a, that is it. Our penultimate encounter with Molly takes place on day 11, right before the final detective quest. Here, Molly reveals that they ran some tests on the severed arm, and discovered that it came from a middle-aged man who was dead at the time it was removed. May tries to draw some conclusions from this, but Molly shuts her down. When she brings up the ghost once again, Molly insists that it wasn't a ghost that did this, but something else. She then does her usual shtick, warning May to be careful one more time, and saying that strange things are going on. Looking back at this conversation, I believe it's the clearest evidence yet that Molly is really trying to get to the bottom of the goings-on around Possum Springs. I don't think she'd share this with May if she wasn't in some way being genuine. But aside from those last two comments, which she's already said multiple times at this point, there's nothing here that sounds menacing to me. It reads, to me, like the words of someone who knows there's more going on, but can't say anything concrete because of a lack of evidence. The last time we see Molly is in the epilogue, where she says she's been receiving strange calls all morning. She starts to ask May if she's seen someone, presumably a missing cultist. And as is the theme with Molly, she tells May to, you guessed it, be careful. Considering that Molly says she's working at the beginning of this conversation, I think it's safe to assume that she's out and about checking in on all those strange calls. But surely she doesn't know the origin of them. Otherwise, she wouldn't have come so close to asking May about them. And she wouldn't be telling May to be careful for the hundredth time. Because she'd know, just as we do, that May is no longer in any danger. So, altogether, when you do a deep dive into Molly's conversations with May, I feel pretty confident in saying that she thinks something sinister is going on in Possum Springs. She constantly warns May to be careful, and follows up on her leads, like the kidnapping at Harfest and the severed arm. But she's got no hard evidence, which is probably why she pumps the brakes on May's wild speculation and seems so burnt out all the time. Though, honestly, the only thing she outright dismisses is her ghost theory, and she was right about that. That having been said, I don't believe that this analysis necessarily redeems Molly. It certainly paints her in a more positive light, but the fact remains that it took May less than a month to confirm the cult's existence. And she managed to do it with just a trip to the library, her three best friends, an old car, and some crazy dreams. If my theory is correct, then what it really means is that Aunt Molly dropped the ball, because she should have stepped up and used the ample police resources at her disposal to solve this mystery. Now, I'm aware, of course, that a small town cop from a place with no cell phone reception is by no means John Wick, but a small town cop is much better equipped to solve a mystery than a college dropout. I mean, for Gwyn's sake, Molly, the cult was doing their rituals in an abandoned mine in the woods. You probably walked past it a million times, including the day after Harfest. I mean, that's some mall cop shit if I've ever heard it. But hey, look on the bright side. At least you told May to be careful. Aside from her Paul Blart level detective skills, part of the reason Molly is unable to solve this mystery can likely be attributed to institutional bias. Molly might not be connected to the cult, but I doubt the same is true for the town council, who will be getting their own video, or the rest of the police department, who we'll touch on at the end of this one. People in powerful positions rarely suspect their own. We see this in the news constantly, with both the police and politicians, adding to the litany of reasons that the goings-on around Possum Springs elude Molly. Still, there are probably some out there who might argue that Molly is fully aware of the cult's existence and even approves of their work. 
as a kind of honorary or adjunct member, if you will. I can't blame these folks. It's really tempting to go down that road. But I think that a lot of this has to do with the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, Mai was not in the epilogue for the game's original cut, which spawned a ton of fan theories that then needed to be recalibrated. Thus, the belief that she was a full-on member shifted. Aside from the case I've already laid out, there are two other reasons that I believe it is unlikely that Molly is a cult member. First, as pointed out by Reddit user Knight of Pandemonium, Molly clearly has no understanding of how the cult chooses its victims. Down in the mines, the cult reveals that they want May and her friends to succeed them. Given that the cult's leader, or spokesperson, whoever it is that handles most of the dialogue in this scene, is aware that May has the glimmer, or the supernatural abilities gifted by the black goat, it's possible that they even want her to replace Eid someday. So May and her friends were never at risk of being sacrificed to the black goat. Or at least, that's what the cult says. Of course, they might be lying about this, but considering they let them go until Eid went rogue and tried to kill them, I think they're telling the truth. In any case, if Molly was an associate of the cult, or approved of their dealings, then she'd likely have known that May and her friends weren't targets, and wouldn't have gone out of her way to make sure that they got home safely on so many occasions. She, uh, also wouldn't have told her to be careful literally every time she saw her. You can find the link to Night of Pandemonium's post, which brings up more points than the ones I referenced here, in the description box. Secondly, given that the cult members want Possum Springs to return to its heyday, when there were factories, vibrant mines, and things of that nature, you'd think that their membership would have an appreciation for, or maybe even a reverential view, towards the town's history. But the game goes out of its way to show us that Molly does not share this viewpoint. After Lorien vandalizes the mural of the miners, the dudes, as May calls them, Molly is pretty level-headed about the whole thing. She doesn't seem to view it as a major issue, and says that the person was just some bored teenager who will likely receive a fine and some minor jail time. One of the city council members, on the other hand, calls them a terrorist. Another goes as far as to say they should be executed for vandalism. Molly is flabbergasted by this, especially the calls for violence. If she was in the cult, then surely she'd share their feelings. As I was finishing up this video, I discovered a piece of circumstantial evidence that pulls all of this together. The conversation between May and Aunt Molly about the testing on the severed arm takes place on day 11. Later that night, May watches as the cult executes Lerv for that very incident, for leaving the severed arm outside of the click-clack way back on day 2. So it took the cult over a week to find out about it. This supports the theory that Molly has no connection to the cult, because if she did, she would have informed them about it far earlier, and Lerv would have been punished already. It also tells us that there are members of the cult in the police department. How else would they have found out about the severed arm and tied it back to one of their own? It's easy for me to imagine Molly at the Possum Springs Police Department, reading through the test results on the arm, and then telling one of her co-workers something to the effect of, you know, this is some really weird shit right here. I think there's something sus, as the kids would say, going on in Possum Springs. We've got a missing teenager. My niece thinks she saw a ghost kidnap somebody at Harfest. And severed arms outside the click-clack? Sure seems like something bad's going on. But I just can't figure out what it is. In response, said co-worker probably brushed her off. Sent her to go pick up a couple boxes of donuts and dialed 1-800-MURDER-KILL the second she was out of sight. I wouldn't be surprised if this co-worker was Dan McConnell, who went with her to check out the woods. Maybe he even made a point of telling her there was no need to check the mine. Or the person who did the autopsy on the arm. But between her Paul Blartness and her institutional bias, she'd never have suspected these people. Ultimately, this analysis of Molly conveys an age-old lesson. Never assume malice when incompetence is just as likely. Molly isn't a cult member, and though she seems to believe that something suspicious is going on in Possum Springs, she never quite gets to the bottom of a mystery that takes her troubled niece just two weeks to solve. So if you ask me, May has every right to call her a mall cop. Thanks for watching. Whether you agree with my theory or disagree with my theory, feel free to sound off in the comments below. I'd love to get a discussion going on this topic. Before we close out, 
I'd just like to take a moment to thank everyone who's been checking out my videos so far. I really appreciate it, and the outpouring of support for the Night in the Woods community in particular has been really touching. I've loved the game for years, and I've wanted to make videos about the game for just as long, but I didn't have the drive or confidence to do it until just a few months ago. Even though the game is six years old, it's clearly touched so many lives, not just mine. I think there's so much more to discuss about it. I've got a ton of ideas, and you guys have really inspired me to get to work on them. So moving forward, I'll be aiming to put out two videos a month. One about Night in the Woods, and one about another game. Next month, for example, it'll be a video on Disco Elysium, followed by a character analysis of B. So if you're looking forward to those videos, be sure to subscribe. See you all next time.